Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. This is section 9.2, which deals with parabolas. But before we uh, get into that, the first thing we want to do is look at kind of what's coming up. Now, 9.2, this section, deals with parabolas. Uh, 9.3 deals with circles. 9.3 is going to be circles. Uh, 9.4 is going to combine ellipse and hyperbolas into one section. So you might be asking, you know, what are these uh, things like an ellipse and hyperbola? Well, there's something called conic section. So our circles and parabolas, these four shapes are found when we divide a conic section. Here I have a cone. And hopefully it's a good illustration for uh, what we're going to look at here. The first thing is something we should be familiar with, and that's the parabola. It's something we covered in almost all of Chapter 7. We just covered in Section 9.1, the video before this one. And this section is 9.2. These are all dedicated to parabolas, which are quadratic functions. The next section is going to deal with circles. Well, what, if, what is a circle? If I take a cone and I cut it straight across, the shape I get is a perfect circle. That circle can be described by an equation, which you'll see in 9.3. Another shape that we get is if we cut it at a diagonal. We're not cutting uh, through the edge of the cone, which is our parabola. This would be our parabola, something we should be familiar with. And hopefully we recognize that shape to be that U shape of a parabola. But an ellipse, if I take the cone and I cut it at an angle all the way through, not through one of its side, but all the way through, but at an angle, what we see is we get the shape of an ellipse, which is kind of like a circle, but it's elongated in one direction or the other. That is an ellipse, which you'll see in 9.4. And lastly, what you're going to see is a hyperbola. If I had two cones, one on top of the other, one is a reflection of the other, and I were to cut through one cone all the way through another, the shape that we get is actually called a hyperbola. Essentially, what a hyperbola is is if we cut this section here, we would have this shape. It looks like a parabola. If I were to draw it, we see, OK, there's that parabolic shape. But we also get one down here, which is a reflected parabolic shape. So we have essentially two parabolas. And that's why we call it a hyperbola or a hyperbola. It has two, elit or two parabolas, but they are reflections of one another. And we'll learn how to graph those in section 9.4. So to continue with 9.2 and look deeper into parabolas, let's take a look at this. This is something we should be familiar. It's something we covered initially in chapter 7, is a parabola in standard form. A parabola is a function because it would pass the vertical line test. f of x equals y is essentially our output value. And we put it in the form a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k, where we could identify a that tells me whether it opens up or opens down, and whether it's positive or negative, respectively. h and k, just like we've seen in the previous uh, section, 9.1, that's our horizontal and vertical translations. The h and k value also tell us the vertex, our reference point of this parabola. Where does it open up from or open down from? What is our highest or lowest point? What is our minimum or maximum value, and where does it occur? Axis of symmetry, we also discovered, was when x equals the h value. That would be that vertical line that forms the axis of symmetry. Everything to the left is to the right. So on a graph, our general uh, parabola, if a is positive, looks like that, where this is the vertex, h and k. The axis of symmetry is that value in which there is a reflection to the right and to the left. And we see that this one either opens up if a is positive or it would open down if a was negative. So we know this about a parabola. Well, what about the inverse parabola or an inverted parabola? That would be not a function. Because remember, this wouldn't pass the horizontal line test. But it's still a shape that we can graph. 
If I have it of the form x equals a times the quantity y minus k squared plus h, if we think about these, they are inverse functions. Where I have a y, I now have an x. Where I have an x, I now have a y. And being that h and k are associated points, x, y, my h is replaced with a k, and my k is replaced with an h. Every aspect, x, y, is replaced. This is the inverse of that function. The only problem is this is not a function because it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. Essentially, when we see a parabola written in standard form, but it's not a function, this x being first, the y values being squared, that tells me that it's a parabola that either opens to the right or to the left. So if we have, for example, this, it still has that parabola shape. And it is a parabola. The only thing is, it wouldn't pass my vertical line test. But we can still tell all about the behavior just as we did here. I can determine its vertex. Well, the vertex is always the value hk. Well, now my h is outside those parentheses. But it still tells me the vertex. The k value, now here's where it's going to be the opposite of what I see in there. The k value is a corresponding y point. So I still have to write my ordered pair x, y, h, k. Now, here's where it is solely different. The axis of symmetry. Well, this is symmetric about a horizontal line because it opens left or right. Well, its axis of symmetry would be the equation of a horizontal line, which is y equals the k value. So this here is my axis of symmetry. So we have to be aware of that because this is an inverse parabola. We have to watch out where we put our h's and k's because we inverse them. They still tell us the same information. We just have to look and see what are we looking for. Which way does our parabola open? And just like this one, if a was positive, it opened up, or negative, opened down, that holds true for this as well. If a is positive, it opens to the right. Those are the positive values of x. If a is negative, it opens to the left, the negative values of x. So this still tells me the direction in which it's opening. Let's take a look at a function and say, well, let's graph this function, f of x equals negative 2 times the quantity x plus 3 squared. And I'm going to use the tools that we covered in 9.1. The first thing I'm going to do is identify the vertex. Well, the vertex is the hk value. Since this is a function, I know it's a parabola because we have an x squared. It either opens up or it opens down. Well, this opens down. But its vertex is hk. h is the opposite of what I see in there. So it's a negative 3. And k, I don't see a k value. Well, that just means k is 0. So I determine its vertex. Now I'm going to determine whether it opens up or down. Well, I see a, this coefficient, is negative. It opens down. And now I could sketch the graph. I know that it opens down from this point right here. This is its maximum value, if we recall that from chapter 7. So I'm going to plot this point, negative 3, 0. And that's this point right here. And maybe I'm going to label that vertex, negative 3, 0. And I know it opens down from that point. But I want to be careful, because it's not like my library function. Because if we recall, this value is greater than 1. If we recall from chapter 7, a value greater than 1 as a coefficient makes my graph narrower. It means it's going to go in the y direction twice as fast as the input value. So I'm going to graph a narrower parabola. And we can see this would be the graph of it, or at least the sketch of a graph. I could go on and plot points to get a more accurate, but it's essentially going to look just like that. So hopefully we can see how these tools can help us graph it, or at least know what it's going to look like on the graph before we even plot a single point. Just the vertex is all I really need. Let's look at this example here. Now, the last example was in standard form, a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. Well, here I see an x. It's the y value that's squared. That tells me right away it's a parabola that either opens to the right or opens to the left.
because the y value is being squared. So this isn't a function, and it's not in function notation. That's another clue to say, hey, this parabola either opens left or right. But it's not in standard form. There's two ways to find the values we need. And one, if we recall again from chapter 7, was to complete the square. So let's complete the square. To do that, I need to have this value on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 7. Now, to complete the square, this factor has to be 1. Well, to make this 1, I need to factor out that value of 3. I have to do it to both of those terms. So I'm going to factor out 3. And that's going to leave me with y squared plus 2y. And I'm going to move this parenthesis out here. And hopefully we recall when completing the square, we, didn't, we need to know 1 half of b quantity squared. Well, my b value for this uh, quadratic would be 2. Half of 2 is 1. And 1 squared is still 1. So if I add 1 to this side, how much did I change that side of the equation by? Well, I'm adding 1, but I'm going to multiply everything in those parentheses by 3. 3 times 1 is 3. I change that side of the equation by 3. I have to change this side by 3, because what I do to one side, I have to make sure I do to the other. I don't want to change its value. So I have x minus 7 plus 3 is x minus 4 equals 3 times this quantity. Well, now that I completed the square, it's going to be a perfect square. y and 1. And now I can set it equal to x, get this value back by itself just like we had before. x equals 3 times y plus 1 quantity squared. Add 4 to both sides. And now it's in standard form. I know a is a positive value, so it's going to open to the right because this is not a function. It opens left or right. h is a negative 1. It's always, or excuse me, k is a negative 1 because when it's in these parentheses, it's always the opposite of what I see. It's y minus the k value. This is the h value because it's outside the parentheses. It would affect x and not y, so it affects x. It's going to be our horizontal shift, h. So our vertex here is hk. Well, we have to determine which one is h. Well, because it's the uh, inverse parabola, this is my h. And it is what it is. This is my k. It's the opposite of what I see in those parentheses. So now I know the vertex. I know it opens to the right which is the positive values of x, because a is positive. So I know it opens right. And because this value is a value greater than 1, I know it's going to be narrower. So I'm ready to graph this parabola, even though it's not a function. So I'm going to start with the vertex for negative 1. That's right there. And I know it's going to open to the right from that point, and it's going to be narrower. So I'm going to graph a narrower parabola. And we, there you have the function, or not the function, but the parabola graph that wasn't a function because it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. So it's not a function, but we can still put it on a graph. Completing the square was a lot of work. And you will be asked to do it in some of your math classes. And it's a tool that you're going to need in future math classes. But we learned about an easier tool. And that's the vertex formula. We have to be careful when using the vertex formula for a parabola that opens left or right. Because we want to find hk. h is negative b over 2a. And k was evaluating the function. Well, this isn't a function. So what we need to do is we need to find k, negative b over 2a, and evaluate the equation for this value. And it's really kind of hard to put it in that notation. You're actually finding the k value first. What's in these parentheses is what you're going to find first. So you're going to find this using negative b over 2a. And then you're going to plug it in for the y value of the original function. And you will then find h. So you can use that tool. 
completing the square works, this tool works. But remember, because this is an inverse function, find k instead of h first. Evaluate it to find the h value. Let's look at one more here. Here we have f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 2. This is a parabola. It is a function. So that should tell you what direction it's going to open. I want you to try this one yourself. And you can complete the square, or you can use the vertex formula. This would be the standard vertex formula, because it is a function. Find h, negative b over 2a. Evaluate the function for that value you find. So this has been section 9.2, parabolas. Thank you for watching.